Hello, and thanks for watching. I'm Alicia Lawson. This week at Otterbein, Otterbein, the football team gets a big win and fall break is about to start. But first, students this week have been experiencing Otterbein's Safety and Awareness Week. Drinking and driving was one of the things students were informed about this week. John Bazika has a story. Okay, can you turn your car off and hand me the keys, please? <laughs> On Wednesday, Otterbein students were given the chance to experience sobriety tests through beer goggles. OPD Deputy Chief John Petrosi hopes the goal was accomplished. The goal is to show students that even when you, you think you're in control because you've only had a couple of drinks, there is significant impairment. And these folks are sober and they're still struggling to, to accomplish simple tasks like walking a straight line or standing on one leg. Petrosi ultimately wants the students to know the overlying risk of drinking and driving. And I think that's what this whole thing is about today is to teach kids that you know, if you're of age and you are drinking, that in itself is not a problem. But when you drink to excess, it creates problems and it could create a, a, a very dangerous situation for yourself and for other people in the community. For this week at Otterbein, John Bazika reporting. Some of the other safety events included informational meetings about if a campus shooter came to Otterbein. Larry Banizak, chief of police, headed up the session. Thursday, the session will end as students will learn about drug dogs and how they work. A recent tab was just added to Otterbein's Ozone webpage, detailing information about the big give, which is coming up. Also, the master plan. Um, including possibilities of a larger plaza in front of the library and a roundabout on the corner of Main and Grove. As stated on the page, this is still in the process of conducting studies for new areas. Nothing has been finalized at this time. To look at possible sketches of the new areas, log on to your Ozone account and click on the Master Plan tab. Now we'll put it over to Grace Lenahan with Arts and Entertainment. Anything exciting going on, Grace? Yeah, there is actually. Uh, students across campus are looking forward to fall break this weekend. And Kendra Swars and I asked students what they'll be doing on this week's KG Around Campus. Hi, and welcome to K and G Tag Team. It's a great day, beautiful day. We have a sobriety test going on behind us. It's like we're, wild, we're, we're looking for wild dingo. What are we going to be talking about today? We are going to be going around and asking people what they're doing for their fall break. Whether yeah. they're going home, going on vacay, whatever they're doing. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Yeah. Let's go. All right, so what are you girls doing for fall break? Anything fun? <laughs> well, I am going home and then I'm going to Gatlinburg with some of my friends. Just having a great time with my parents because I right. miss them. Yeah, I'm going to the beach, uh, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, where I live, turning up. Uh, you're, go you're going to Hong Kong? Yeah, I have to crown the next victim. <gasps> he We're was with the king! We're with the king! He was homecoming king! What are you doing for fall break? Working. <laughs> what are you doing for fall break? That's a great question. <laughs> I am going home to Alliance, Ohio. You're going home? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm going to Texas. Okay. <laughs> for what? <laughs> Is it family? We're going to do some line dancing, you know. Do it right now. Mine. Go. Yes. What do you call that move? The grapevine? Yeah, love that. Okay, yeah. and that was uh, a little dancing with Grace. Yes. Yeah, so awesome. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week or later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For students who don't have plans to leave Otterbein for fall break, there is still plenty going on in the Westerville area and Central Ohio area. Here is your fall break community calendar.
Seltzer is in now with a sports update. And Josh, the football team got a big win at Memorial Stadium this weekend, didn't they? Yeah, it was really a huge win for the Otterbein Cardinals. After putting goose eggs on the board for two of their first three games, the Otterbein football team finally got some offense rolling against Bolden Wallace this past Saturday. A run game that had been for the most part stagnant through three weeks exploded thanks to better blocking up front. Oh yeah, and a man named Drew Irvin as well. OTV's David Kinder breaks down the action from Saturday's game. Picking up action late in the first quarter, out of the I formation, Sizemore hands off to Drew Irvin. He runs into the line, he lowers his shoulder pads, breaks a few tackles, and the big man is on his way. 69 yards later, he has an Otterbein first down and the longest play of the season for the Cardinals to that point. Very next play, Ben Sizemore fakes a pitch to Tyler Hammond, stumbles, but he's able to keep his balance and goes to the end zone, his first rushing touchdown of the year. However, a high snap and Alana Gaither would just have to fall on the extra point attempt and the Bolden Walls would respond. Josiah Holt takes the handoff and carries for a first down, his first game this year after coming back from injury. Then Michael Slack drops back the pass, Otterbein loses a contain and the elusive quarterback takes off. He's at the 10-5 and he's into the end zone for the touchdown to tie the game up. In the second quarter, Holt takes it again with Bolden Wallace driving. and He's able to go all the way down to the 10-yard line, but he's stripped of the ball. Otterbein recovers and stops a bold one Wallace drive. Later on on the Cardinal drive, facing a huge third down, Sizemore keeps it himself, and he's able to stumble for the first down. And Irvin, again, with this carry, he goes over 100 yards in the game. He's the first Otterbein Cardinal to rush for more than 100 yards since Cody Green did it in 2011. He goes for 76 yards and the touchdown, Otterbein's longest play of the season. Alana Gaither would make good on the point after touchdown this time, and the Cards would take a 13-7 lead into the locker room. And in the second half, the Cardinal defense is able to tighten. Evan Bernstein able to trip up slack there. Then the Cards catch a huge break here as they muff the snap on a field goal attempt. Wes McKeever is able to trip him up and the Cards take over. Here, Sizemore fakes the give to Irvin and he has Steve Carpenter on the screen route. Carpenter is able to loot a pair of tackles and he's finally pushed out of bounds near the 10 yard line. Then on fourth down and inches, the give to Irvin, he leaps and he's able to pick up the first down. Then the very next play, fakes to Irvin, Sizemore rolls out and he has Chester Deaton all by himself in the end zone. And on the final drive of the game, the Cardinal defense was up to the task. Here the entire linebacking core meets Reed, tackles him for a loss. Last play on fourth down, Slack rolls to pass, almost intercepted by Zach Greaves. And then the best formation in football, the victory formation. Otterbein gets it done 19-7 over Baldwin Wallace. And as you could see on your screen a moment ago, the win improves Otterbein to 2-2 two two overall, while Baldwin Wallace falls to 2-2. Two and, two. and after the win, our Jordan Brown caught up with head coach Tim Dow. Coach, you talked about the running game, obviously a huge part of this game. Elaborate why it was such a big part this game. Well, I thought I thought we I needed to establish a run to shorten the game a little bit. And, you know, we, we changed our game plan, and I told them all week, if they do the little things, we'll be able to run the football. Otterbein's been known not to be able to run the football, a throwing team, and I felt this week we could run the football, and, you know, I'm anxious to see how many yards we went for. But uh, I'm very proud of the O-line and the way we ran the ball and the backs running hard, and I thought it was just a big integral part of the game. What does this win, especially at home, mean to the team? Well, I think it's a it's a springboard. I mean, that's a good football team. You know, they're preseason ranked in the top 25, and you know we've lost to two very good teams. And I, I thought, you know, this will springboard us in, hopefully, give us our confidence back. Good luck next week, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Billy. Yeah. Act wrapped, racked up over 260 yards on the ground and will look to keep that offensive momentum rolling this Saturday when they travel to face 1-3 Muskingum. WOBN's John Mazika and Jacob Barker will have the call with pregame beginning at 1:15. Well, if you've made it out to watch any Otterbein volleyball matches this season, you probably know at least one thing. They're pretty good, and recently they've been really good. Since their four-game setback earlier in the season, the Cards have strung together nine straight wins, winning seven of their last eight matches, three sets to none. Their most recent victim was OAC foe Muskingum this last Tuesday. Otterbein notched a three-set victory to remain unbeaten in OAC play. Senior Annie Junger led the team with 11 kills, while Tabitha Piper dissed out 30 assists. Monica McDonald's 14th-ranked squad will be in action next this Tuesday when they travel to Ada to take on the Polar Bears of ONU. And volleyball, Lish is certainly looking right, really good right now, and football looking to keep that going this Saturday as well. Sounds pretty exciting in sports. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. 
On behalf of myself, Grace Lenahan, and Josh, and the entire crew, I'm Alicia Lawson, wishing you a fantastic fall break. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.